Ned Siegel observes the activity in the garden he created. It purposefully has a variety of mostly native plants and flowers. They attract bees. There are thousands of native bees. He documents the little visitors by taking photos and some videos. Ned uploads the photos to a research-based program called the Shutterbee Citizen Science Program. Shutterbee uses the iNaturalist app to identify bees in the St. Louis metropolitan area. Ned is a trained citizen scientist in the Shutterbee project. The retired biochemist is a master gardener and naturalist. I actually have a degree in botany, so I always was interested in plants. So being part of the Shutterbee surveys was a natural next step for Ned and his home garden in Belleville, Illinois. I do that every approximately every two weeks. So a 30 minute walk taking pictures of bees, I'll just have probably hundreds of pictures sometimes. Then one morning in late July, the walk was like any other until he photographed this bumblebee. He uploaded the photos to the Shutterbee Project on the iNaturalist app. Then boom, 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 all the experts saying, wait a minute, this is a this is a rare bee. It's a lemon cuckoo bee. Photograph the lemon cuckoo bee, which is a rare bee found in Missouri. And it hasn't been found in the St. Louis metropolitan area since the 1800s, 1854. That's seven years before the Civil War. It has been documented in southern Illinois and in northern Illinois more recently. Nicole Miller Strutman is the co-creator of Shutterbee. And I'm the Browning Chair of Biology at Webster University. This bee is a parasitic bee. It's a cuckoo bee, kind of like a cuckoo bird. It lays its larvae in the nest of other bees, so it doesn't actually care for its young. It lets other bees do that. So that's sort of a unique natural history um, or lifestyle, if you will, that um, requires to have a high population of other kinds of bees. So in order to find parasitic bees, you have to have enough of their host bees. In the moments the rare parasitic bumblebee was being identified, the Shutterbee team was buzzing with excitement. My uh, co-creator, Nina Fogel, sent me a, um, a message with a bee with just these big googly eyes that was just like, whoa, look at this bee. There's something cool is going on here. Then it was verified by myself as well as several other specialists. So what this finding, or one of the things that this finding demonstrates is that at least in the region where Ned collected, that there's a high enough abundance of other bees that this rare cuckoo bee can persist. Now, why we haven't seen that bee since 1854, you know, part of that is where we, how much we're researching for it, right? So you always have to, comp you know, acknowledge that, that maybe we weren't looking that hard for it. Shutterbee is meant to be that busy bee that's all about bees. So we've been doing this project for about four years. We got some really interesting results that demonstrate that, you know, what you do locally actually really matters. St. Louis has a historically high bee diversity in part because of our unique sort of ecological placement. We have lots of different habitats in a close area. Um, and that influences what bees are found in the city. She says this rare sighting is important when studying bees and climate change. Species are shifting with, as it gets warmer, they're moving towards the poles. So it's exciting to see this bee, who's at the southern end of its range, still persisting here. That is a good thing because it's implying that, you know, they're able to, at least so far, survive despite warming. All we know is that we found this bee um, and it's still hanging on. And now with the latest buzz happening here, maybe more people will become a citizen scientist like Ned. I don't know why I saw the lemon cuckoo bumblebee when I did. The plant that she was feeding upon, our, our native purple cone flower, a lot of the bees use that plant. He's been looking for that lemon cuckoo bee ever since. I haven't seen it. No, and I haven't seen it since. I was lucky, you know, and, but I carry my phone with me anytime I'm out here putzing in the garden, thinking maybe I'll see her again. 